Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. One on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. <laughs> we be on fire, we be lit lit. lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Hey. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, <laughs> big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official. Mr. Man. Most beautiful. Mr. Man. Yeah, I'm not for the stop, nigga. I, I married for a reason. I ain't gonna get up in there. Yeah, I'm gonna go hard today. You <laughs> Yes sir. <laughs> man, thank hey SF? Yes, sir. Man, hey, it's going down, man. You on Boss Talk 101. Hey, I don't know I if you it. know what you walked off into, man. <laughs> I'm excited about it, man. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> and that intro made me think I can rap, man. Man, I'm bust a line or two, bro. <laughs> man, shout out to EXO, man. She be doing her thing, man, on the intro, man. Yeah, I love Na it. She said, name another podcast like this. You know, that that we that built us where we gotta go on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got so, so, yes, so Sean, man, Sean Banks. Yes, sir, Sean Banks. So, so we we gonna get into the foundation. We gonna get right. into everything. There's a lot wrapped around who you are yes, sir. and what you've brought to the table, man. And just some extraordinary things that I've heard. You know, far as the way that um, you know you're affecting the inner city on helping others. Yes, sir. I think that's so important. You know what I'm saying? These are the shows that that I um, I have a good time doing. <laughs> You know why? Because I know that the work's being done. Yeah. You know, and and, and you might get mad at me about this, but I'm gonna say it because I'm just I'm one. But I'm 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 kind of one of what they call a radical. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even feel it in like just a lot of time the church goes and stuff like that. Right. It, it, people going through the motion, but nobody's helping nobody. A lot of times, man, yeah. I think we pass the church up going to the church. Yeah, you're right. So I just. Love the fact when I get somebody in front of me who say, look here, man, I was over here and I did this and I did that. And hey, man, we trying to help this. And you can go over and see the structure over there. Say, I ain't got time to play, man. Right. I'm getting older now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I really want to I want to talk about what's going down. Mm -hmm. See, I, I'm from the block. So when you run the block, I know what it is. I, if I ain't making no money, I know I ain't making no money. So when we was living out there for Satan and doing all the crazy stuff, we were being productive in it. Right. You right. right. <laughs> I don't right. know about you, but I was real productive in my, my Yeah, before I got saved and yeah. before I started believing in anything, yeah. I was being productive in everything. <laughs> <laughs> Productive. <laughs> so, so Productive. this ain't about me, man. Sean, this about you, man. Mr. SF, man, tell us, man, just uh, a little bit about yourself, where you grew up at. Did you grew up in Atlanta? I grew up in Atlanta. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. Wow. Yeah. Seattle, Washington. Yeah. I had four uncles up there. Oh, one, yeah. I only got one now. Mm -hmm. uh, four, four of them, three of them, they was older, man. They was my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 yeah, they was tough, boy. They sang. <laughs> Them boy could sing, too, boy. They had a little group. You know, that's probably I why I can sing. Yeah, I can sing, too, like them. That's yeah, why I know I can sing. No, I knew he can sing, but yeah. I didn't know his uncle's son. That's <laughs> <laughs> so in the blood. My uncles can sing, man. Yeah. They was, yeah, they used to go around and have that little, what they call the quintet or quartet. Mm -hmm. They would go around and sing, man. Seattle, Washington, though. Yes, sir. So Seattle. how old were you when you moved down to uh, Atlanta? I got to Atlanta when I was 12. 12? Yeah, yeah. So I got down when uh, when Outkast was big, LaFace had jumped off. Say, man, look, man, don't come in here talking about music, bro. You ain't even, <laughs> nah, don't do that, man. I'm a music guy. Yeah. I get excited when you start oh, yeah. talking about different things, man. You um, say when Outkast dropped, what was it? Players, but all the players. players, players. Like, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but why the move to Atlanta? Uh, my mother wanted something different. She wanted something different. Uh, we grew up uh, inner city Seattle uh, area called the CD, and that was where all pretty much where all the black people were in Seattle when I was growing up. And uh, you know, I grew up in the '80s, so you know, I remember what it was. You know, before crack hit, and then what it was after crack hit. Before crack, everything was cool. You know, after crack, man, when crack hit, it was the man that would be the butcher on the street. You know, cutting your meat. All of a sudden, was breaking in your house. So mm -hmm. there was a big difference. My mom's like, "No, nah, we gotta get out." So she started cleaning houses. And uh, she started cleaning houses, uh, Mercer Island, a lot of wealthy areas. And uh, that was where I started getting my dream from. That's where I started seeing how other people lived. And, you know, mm -hmm. she started showing me what I could do. 
Uh, and so, well, where was your dad doing all this time? Uh, my dad was a businessman. Uh, they just weren't together. Uh, okay. So my dad was living a different life. Uh, so he, and, was he still in Seattle? Uh, no, he's in California now. Okay, but no, but at that time was yeah, he, he was. was. Okay, yeah. so he didn't make a move with y'all. No, he did not. Nah. Okay, so nah. you didn't get to see him as often. Um, no, once I came to Atlanta, no, I didn't. No, I okay. didn't see him often. Maybe once, uh, once, maybe twice a year, maybe. How uh, is that for a young boy as yourself growing up and not having a father figure, you know, in your life? Uh, I was pissed. Mm-hmm. I was very upset not to have my father in my life. Part of the reason why I fought so much mm-hmm. as a kid because I knew I had a father. I knew he was alive. I knew he was a great man, right? But he wasn't in my in my home, and so I was very upset about that. So that's why I was getting pro- in trouble at school a lot. Uh, which is how my mom got me into martial arts and all that to keep me from getting in trouble. But Were you yeah. ever angry at your mom for that? Because sometimes kids would be like, well, you took me away from my dad type of thing. Uh, no, I wasn't angry at my mom because my mom was the one that was hustling, making it happen. She was okay. the one making sure we had food on the table. So I could never be mad at her. Uh, I was mad at him because mm-hmm. uh, I was like, hey, regardless of, man, you, you're supposed to be around. You know, we moved to Atlanta and you moved too. you know, whatever. You know, you got us. You know, I'm a, I'm a cub in the, in the jungle by myself trying to figure it out. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be alive as a black man. Uh, I'm not supposed to make it past 18, 25. So I was very upset. Right, and, and we was dealing with racism as kids. So any siblings? Different. Sorry. Any siblings? Uh, yeah, I got a lot of siblings. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of siblings. I got a lot of siblings. By yeah. your mom or by your dad? Um, well, by my mother, it's uh, my sister April and I, and then okay. my dad. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dad's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but when you think about just the Atlanta move and and, and seeing the culture of the music, because as soon as you came into Atlanta, you started talking about the music because this is something else down here. You know, these guys, man, they, even when the turn up was in New York, they still was making waves in, down here. Uh, everybody was still down here doing their thing. Jermaine Dupri, he was one of the patriarchs. That's what mm-hmm. I call him. Yeah. He started this thing off. You know what I'm saying? He was, yeah, the crisscross will make you jump. Mm-hmm. Jump. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and he was, and, and I always thought of him as a rich kid. I'm like, Jermaine, Jermaine Dupri come from money because I heard all the stories that he came from money. Okay. You know, I don't know if that's the truth, but that's what I had in my mind. And that don't make it true. Right. But in my mind, I'm like, this, this cat come from money, and he was trying to help everybody else in hip-hop, you know, even though hip-hop started on the East Coast right. and it migrated to the West. Right. When right. he hit the South, he was the one, before it even trickled down to the South, he, he's one of the patriarchs. So, yeah. for me, you know what I mean? Along with Jay, Jay Prince, of course, but, you know, uh, Jermaine Dupri. So, being in Atlanta, how did that music and, and the influence of him, we're going to get into everything else. I know you was, you, yeah, you turned about 16, 17. And, yeah, yeah, you thought you was cool. You got, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody get, let you borrow a car first. Absolutely. That's how you start. <laughs> that's how I started. <laughs> that's how I started. And yeah. then you and, and you and, and, and you you surrounded by parties. Yeah. So what what was that like being a teenager and, and just going to school here in Atlanta and and yeah you play oh yeah I already know you yeah you were walking girls to the locker at school I didn't know what you were doing man yeah, yeah. Uh, growing up in Atlanta was a ball uh, the music was was great uh, like I said I was I mean Outkast TLC I mean you had Dallas Austin you had ABC you had all these different I mean I was in love with Tony Braxton and yeah, you, you know both I'm, man oh, you know man. she had a little deep voice man. Man, the first time I met Tony Braxton. You met him? Yeah. I'm mad. Just yeah. shut, shut the interview down. <laughs> Cut them cameras off. You yeah. Know? yeah. So how was yeah. it me? Nah. It was it was a, a beautiful experience. <laughs> it this was the, beautiful, this bro. the short hair uh, Tony Braxton. This is short hair Tony oh, Braxton. That's the this, bad this one is, right there. This is breathe again, Tony Braxton. Oh, just breathe again. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, man. I, hey, man. Listen, man. You yeah. can't play with that, man. Bro, I lost all stamina, bro. So like, where you meet her at, and how met, you meet her? I met her. I was uh, an intern at Red Zone Studios. Okay. I was writing songs. So oh, you be writing? Yeah. So my mother. Uh, the deal was if I got good grades in school in high school she would let me go to the studio and intern so I would go there with Tricky Stewart and then Sean Hall and I would sit there and listen and watch them and be there all night and uh, they were working on uh, the Braxton's album at the time and uh, they was like yo Tony Braxton coming tonight and I was like word they was like yeah you gonna get to meet her I was like word and they was like yeah <laughs> bro she walked in and there she was and she was like how you doing and I was like you guys, you guys got talk stuck. To oh man, yeah, how can you not? It's Tony Braxton. What'd she you know? say when she said, How you doing? Yeah. She smiled. You know, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's that all she, Hey man, that boy Flo 
floating on there. Sun floating on there. All right, right let me there, tell you. Man. She had on some jeans oh. and, a, and a white like tank top, and I, I'll never forget it. And some man, I, what color boy. shoes? Was that the first time? I don't remember the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the shoes. <laughs> shoes. Nobody looking at no shoes. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's get. Uh oh, I ain't going there. Get that far. I'm not. <laughs> I was stuck right there. I'm not saying that, but yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Tony Braxton, yeah, and uh, that was the first and last time you seen her. That was the first and last Damn. time I saw her. I know, huh? <laughs> you didn't even try to get a number, did you? He, no, how old were you? Sixteen. I was about. I was about fifteen. Yeah. And how old was yeah. she? I don't know. I should have shot. She was shot grown. Though. You should have. Yeah, she was you, grown. I, I yeah. said, "Hey, let me get that number." She yeah, said, "Huh, little boy?" Yeah, she probably yeah, laughed. Yeah, yeah. Let me get that number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so um, Atlanta it has birthed a lot of great artists, man. Oh yeah. Um, the scene and the music, man. You got Gucci down here, Ti's. You got Jeezy that was young down Jock. here, Young Jock. All these different Absolutely. people, man. And I just name, to name a few few of them, man. It's it's some crazy talent that was yeah. down here. You can keep going. So you are growing up in these neighborhoods, yeah. hearing the songs being played. Strip clubs come on the scene. Yeah. Don't try to play with me. Strip yeah, I know. On the yeah, scene. you got Freak your me. nice, you got your nice <laughs> uh, jacket vest on and everything. And yeah, yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, but, but but you was a young buck, so I you was. was trying to be nose at blue yeah. flame. I was trying to be anywhere I could, <laughs> <laughs> anywhere they let us in. So, so, did you ever yeah. try to sneak into places? Absolutely. Yeah, you had to. Yeah, you had to. We got in a couple sneak times. In. Yeah, yeah, I had. Yeah, I use anybody ID. I know dang well that ain't me. I'm just here. Let me go in there. Yeah, they look at me. That's not you. Go on, boy. <laughs> <laughs> We went into a couple spots, man. They had, you know, you know, sad wounds and all that in there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we was in there. Did though. you? Did you? I mean, I have been to some where it get raided and bust. Yeah, mm -hmm. men come in with masks on. So what they would do is they'll send the the the, the guy in the, the undercover in, uh -huh. and he come in, he scope everybody out, and these girls ain't supposed to be really doing all this extra stuff they doing. <laughs> and so he's checking it out. He's just like uh, uh, undercover. He's checking it out. Yeah. Next thing you know, he go out. They all come back in with masks on. I'm not playing. I was I'm saying, what the hell? And he pointing out people. It's the same. Yeah. We don't know who it is because now he got a mask on. Now he pointing to everybody that was doing something wrong. And I'm hoping like hell he don't Ooh. point at me. I'm, but I remember these nights. You know what I mean? These happened. Yeah. I don't know how they do it down here, but that was in Dallas. You <laughs> but I, do it I guarantee way. they got something going on. Sure. So, man, you know, um, just... Uh, just thank you for coming on the show first and foremost. Yeah. Um, uh, I've had fun yeah, already. Man. We just got started. We ain't even yes, but sir. ten minutes into it, <laughs> and just I went all the way into the fact of I'm having a good time with you. Yes, sir. But the thing I, that that caught my attention was when they said that you now uh, at this time are helping the foundation, helping kids. I want to get into that a little bit. Just okay. uh, how did you? make that transformation into doing what you're doing? What made you say, I want to I want to be a part of something to help? And has that always been a vision of yours? Uh, so I'll start with the answer to that question first. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, I never wanted to work with kids at all. No, you want to be a rapper. I had no passion. <laughs> I wanted to be in business. I wanted to do something else besides <laughs> working with kids. <laughs> you in Atlanta, man. Hey, I, hey, a writer or something. I mean, my mom was on something totally different, yeah. man. Yeah, I had nothing. I didn't want to work with kids at all. I had zero passion to work with kids. Uh, and so what would happen, I was serving at my church. And uh, like I said, I've been in self-defense and stuff all my life. And so they would put me in the children's ministry. And I would get mad about that. And they would just put me back there. And then I'd complain. And then they'd put me back there. And I'd complain. And then they listen. And they'd be like, all right, we hear you, brother. And then they put me back there. And they so, knew something you didn't. They knew something I didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I couldn't stand it. I mean, I could not stand being there. I wanted to be somewhere else. I wanted to be down in the sanctuary. And uh, one day a brother came to me. He said, man, let me tell you why we got you here. He said, you know, when these parents come and drop their kids off, they need to know their kids are safe. They said, and if they are concerned about the safety of their children, they can't get the word. They're not going to be able to understand. They won't because they focused on their kids. They said, when they see you, they know their kids are all right. And so that gave me some understanding, but I still didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happened, man, is that um, the market changed about 2008. I was in real estate at the time. I was doing finance. Couldn't get people financed for deals. And a training buddy of mine was like, hey, man, look, we can open up some schools and start teaching some people martial arts. Now, my aunt and my cousin were murdered uh, when I was about 16, 17, wow, domestic sorry. violence situation. 
and I had always promised myself I would do something in their honor. And uh, it was 10 years from that time to the time that I started. And I, it was just a seed in my heart, you know? So when we started teaching women self-defense, that's, that seed started coming out the ground. And from there, we just started finding a need, right? I just, there was another need, another need, you know, how do we keep servicing the people? Cause I took it for granted. I thought that there was, everybody was working with youth and helping the kids out, but they weren't. Yeah, so, you know, when that, when that happened and we saw there was such a big need, it was like, okay, well, we got self-defense classes going. All right, what else do they need? During the summertime, there was no youth programs. So, man, how's there no youth programs? We grew up in the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA, so I thought they had it on lock. There weren't none. There weren't enough. So, like, okay, well, let's open up Camp Warrior King. And so things just kept kept opening up. Wow. That's dope, man. Yeah. So um, the foundation, let's talk about them a little bit. What, okay. What, which one, what came first? <laughs> You got a few things going on, of course. Yes, sir. Uh, what came first was I Am Defense. Okay. And I Am Defense is I Am Defense Institute for Women and Children. And that teaches women and children how to defend themselves against an aggressive attacker. Wow. So that's, you know, pretty much helping women in domestic violence situations uh, out on the street. You know, we teach them how to shoot. You know, young kids, teaching them how to defend themselves in school from getting beat up. You know, talking about things so that they're safe because a lot of them aren't getting it at home. You know, what to do if you're walking down the street, somebody wants to snatch you in the car. How do you keep that from happening to yourself, right? Uh, keeping yourself in situations where, you know, bad things aren't happening to kids. Because pretty much the problems in the world affect the children. It's like, you know, it rolls downhill, right? So it affects the kids. So it's trying to help them. To get themselves together. So from I Am Defense, when came Camp Warrior King. Well, I have a question about that. Did you have to get certified to be able to coach and teach self-defense? Uh, well, I've been in martial arts for, for a very long time. So I was Your already a black belt. belt. Absolutely. Yeah, six degree black belt. And I'm keto and taekwondo. And I, I knew studying. it. Wait a minute, man. <laughs> I'm about to grab you out there. I'm serious. I said, you know that nigga talking to my wife? <laughs> <laughs> I looked over. I said, "That nigga, what that nigga say?" <laughs> you know, but you know, I, 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 I don't know what color yeah. my. I ain't even got a belt on him. <laughs> so when I seen you, I said, "Man, let me go over there and grab that nigga by his neck." You know, <laughs> but some in my spirit say, "Don't do it." <laughs> Oh man, you wow. <laughs> um, But yeah, I've been doing that my whole life, you know, and then got certified, you know, firearms trainer, certified rifle trainer, you know, those things to be able to teach women different skills. Wow. Um, yeah, and so then came, like I said, Camp Warrior King, because there wasn't a camp that was doing it how we felt it should be done, where kids got exposure to activities yeah. that they normally wouldn't experience during the school year. How do we keep them from, you know, selling drugs? How do we keep them from, you know, how do we keep them? engage in something positive as opposed to something negative and the way to do that is to expose them to things they may like mm -hmm. right so we teach them how to shoot right because kids want to know about guns so we teach them safely how to shoot how to fish you know 3d archery playing saxophone guitar piano canoeing uh, we take them spelunking we, wow. we take them on field trips all over the region they do when did you start all of this uh because i know the first one was self-defense uh -huh. um when did that what year did that start uh that started uh about 2007, 2008. I started part time 2007, and 2008 was about full time. And when did the kids start? Uh, about the same time, about a year or so after that. Okay. Yeah, about a year or so oh, after that. And have you seen the increase? Because I would assume that there would be an increase during the pandemic, especially for the self defense, because you know more women are at home walking mm -hmm. and they'll feel like they need that safety. Right. Um, well, what we really saw an increase in is the is the camp. Uh, parents was like, get these kids out the house. Mm. <laughs> we got, get them out the house, bro. Right. I know it, man. I wish I could yeah. got mine up there. You know what I'm hey, talking about? man, get them yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I just sent them right on up there, and man. And what precautions yeah. were you taking during the pandemic? Uh, well, the so the first year, well, last year when it first hit, uh, we were going to open up. Everything was ready to go. And it, the first day we opened up, it hit my spirit that it really wasn't. If we didn't want to risk losing a child wow. was the thing. You know, I didn't want to be in a situation where if one child was lost, you know, that would it just would never be the same. So we shut down. We was like, we're not going to do it. Make sure the kids are safe. So next year, this past season, 2021, it was bananas. Uh, we had more kids than we ever had before. Uh, I mean, it was lit. That's when OG Big Red, we did the celebrity basketball mm -hmm. tournament and all that. And it was just, it was crazy. They had a good time. <laughs> 
I think when we was down there, they was getting ready to do that, wasn't Right, that's what yeah. I was telling him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They we getting had ready to leave, go. We had to leave, man. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to come over there. They yeah. said basketball, nigga, and I thought about back in the days. <laughs> you, you know how I did you in Houston. Don't go there. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know what? Because she went to college, you know what? Yeah. I want to take out college folks. But for a woman, you, know, you, you don't want to. You don't want to do your husband like that because right. then you go. Right. And stuff like that. You can, right. you gotta let him win sometimes. You gotta let him. You let him win. Let I him remember, win. man. I just you gotta let him win. <laughs> Dang, man, I could have been. Hey, man, yeah. Spud, where one of them niggas, man? You know, so, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I thought I had something. You yeah, know, Bugsy Bogues. Yeah, yeah, Bugsy. Yeah, one of them boys, man. Yeah. I, you know, I ain't had a hype for it, but yeah. you know, yeah, I, I, yeah, I shoot a nigga lights out. He shoot the lights out. <laughs> Even Texas too. We call him Lil Tex. <laughs> No. Little Tex shooting the lights <laughs> on y'all. <laughs> so, you know, when when you get a child that's dealing with anger, yeah, um, and he, then you start to teach him, uh, like, uh, like uh, you start to teach him uh, martial arts. Mm -hmm. um, what the, do you give me some instances where that child take on take to it, and you see? Uh, the production level change for us in his school and just in his everyday activity because I this is the stories that we think happen when Absolutely. it comes to martial arts. Is that a Absolutely. true thing? It's very true. Okay. Uh, the first thing you see, the biggest difference you see is is their confidence increase. That's the first thing, right? Okay. Because now they're uh, they're not afraid of walking down the hallway or you know any situation. Depends on what the parents really want them to work on. Uh, you'll start to see their discipline improve. You start to see their focus improve, which means you're going to see their grades improve almost immediately wow. when they start coming to the classes. Yeah, because the the whole thing is is uh, is is discipline. When they come to a martial arts program, the whole the key is discipline. That the kids have to start having discipline. When they start having that discipline, they start to learn. When they start to learn, they start to perform better. When they start to perform better, they start to believe in themselves, so they start to do more. So. Let's say a kid was concerned about somebody beating them up in the hallway. They're not as concerned no more, right? They almost want to be tried, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's you know, the way they. Yeah. you ever had a child that um, has been bullied, yeah. and then came to you? Yes, got disciplined, learned what he had to go, learn, but went to go beat somebody back up or revenge. Um, I'm pretty sure it happens. Uh, a lot of times, what happens is uh, you had a kid that would come back and try them again, right? First time we tried them and may have beat them up or something like that. And then that same kid comes and tries them again and then the outcome is different. Okay. That's normally what happens. Or that kid that yeah. you've been training go off the deep end okay. and he out here yeah 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 he like uh on karate kid right you know the one what, what was that the can say name the one that was in the the place the mean one you had the mean one. you had uh, <laughs> mr miyagi Miyagi. but the other one he used to teach and he did not play when it come down to teaching them oh straight, yeah straight mm. Activator, uh, killer. When you see somebody, yeah, Cobra them. Kai, yeah, Cobra <laughs> Kai, exactly. exactly. You yeah. got it, man. Yeah. Cobra Kai, Cobra man. Kai. So, yeah. have you ever had a kid that was uh, um, just overly aggressive? You had to tell him, man, I'm not going to train you. You can't do that, or you know, pulled him back, or pulled the reins back on him. Sure. So yeah. you get kids like that all the time that are overly aggressive and yeah. think that they can fight, and uh, and that's a good thing that you want them to have that confidence. The way that you deal with it, different ways depending on the kid. Uh, normally, you just let them start sparring everybody, right? Because eventually what happens is that you're not going to beat everybody, and you're not going to beat everybody over and over and over again. Eventually, you're going to get tired. Wow. Uh, so there's ways to deal with it. I like that. Yeah, there's ways to deal with it because the whole thing is, is you want to keep them humble so they don't hurt themselves, right? I mean, you you can think you're bad right here, but you can go out in the street, man, and somebody had never done it before in life man. and to beat the brakes off you, you know? So yeah. you don't want to be that kind of person that's overly arrogant, um, especially you walk out telling people what you know because they're going to be like alright let me see it right it's people that want to see right well let me see what you can do then let me see I haven't heard about it right so um, yeah that's how you deal with that yeah I, I, had, <laughs> I worked with a guy man one time I didn't like this one guy's name was Tim shout out to Tim Lopez man we still doing our thing mm -hmm. I ain't seen you nigga but I, I mean I didn't like some of the stuff he do I loved him we would go out and stuff together but I didn't like some of the things that he would do and uh, one time man this guy uh <clears throat> There's another guy, I, I, Run was his name. Uh -huh. And Run knew, I knew he was about a, I don't know, way up degree black belt. He yeah. run every day. And I knew it. And I'm so, you know, I'm just being, I'm being facetious, but I'm really tripping on the fact that, hey, this guy, he, I'm a whooping when I see him. He didn't know it. I'm, I knew it. I said, man, make sure. <laughs> 
I say, when he come, you gonna grab him? I say, he say, yeah, I'm gonna grab him, and, and man, I'm gonna I'm, I'm hit him in his eye. <laughs> and he didn't do it, but I sure wanted to see what that. I didn't. I knew he had been working out. He was like this hell of a fighter. I heard, uh -huh. you know. I never seen him get to operate. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I have Ooh. I have tons of stories like that. I had another friend that was a boxer, and uh, yeah, one of my, the other partners. He said he was gonna jump on him, and I say really, Ooh. and man, I never. He was a little dude though, uh -huh. but the dude was bigger, yeah, taller and everything. The one that was the one would say I'm gonna whoop him. Uh huh. Man, that dude, man, man he did. Curtis is dead now. He died. Uh, but man, he whooped that dude, man. Little old bitty dude. Yeah, he man, got he slammed did. by four times. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! He kept getting slammed. It, and, and, and when he would get slammed, he'd get back up and just. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, look like Mark. You know what Mark? He <laughs> 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 knocked all over his head. <laughs> he went to work. They said, man, what happened to you? Y'all, man, you know how it is, man. And he got into it, man. He's like, day day. Him. Like, you know, four five of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and, but the mom was out there. Yeah. That's the bad boy. With mama out there, mm -hmm. the one she was saying, "Get him!" Ooh. But he couldn't get him. Man, yeah. he got beat up in front of his mama. Yeah, yeah, that's no good. Man, <laughs> so, so when did you first learn? Hey, man, I can fight. Like, like I mean, I want to be into martial arts. Uh, it was one. Of, I really, I like martial arts. I like watching on TV. Uh, my mom she put do me in too. It. She, yeah. I think she didn't try to put a few moves on me. She I don't mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> but so so that's how you got into it. Yeah, that's how. Well, my mom. Yeah, my mom got me into it because, uh, like I said, when we were growing up, I mean, there's gangs started coming up everywhere in Seattle. I mean, it was, people were like, man, there's black people in Seattle. Yeah, there's black people in Seattle. There was gangs in Seattle. Cause it was coming from L.A. from Denver. They was coming. You know, so. Um, she put me in martial arts to keep me busy. Mm -hmm. is, is how it started. So yeah. I used to walk from I used to live in Bryan Manor, and we walked from Bryan Manor right up to the Boys and Girls Club. Then I would go do martial arts, and so that's how I started. And all, and then I went and did martial arts somewhere else, and I just kind of stayed with it. But I, I was interested in the TV part. I didn't know nothing about the discipline part and all that. How hard it was going to be, uh, but it was good for me. Who was the Who was the best, Bruce Lee or Chuck Norris? Oh, uh, Bruce Lee, hands down. Wow. Um what about this? Chuck that, Norris that will tell you even that. That should be a question. <laughs> no, okay. Well, who was the who's the child? Uh, well, the, the, Chuck Norris gonna say that because he's gonna be you know when he was living he's gonna be right. modest about it. What about that big Chinese guy with all the muscles? You talking about Bolo? Bolo was a beast. Wasn't Bolo he? was a beast. Yeah, he was. He was a Tai Chi master, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe Bolo was deaf as well. I'm not exactly I think I heard that. that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah what he was a, a cold boy too. Well, what about? Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. Let's go. I'm tired of playing with y'all. Oh man, he's trying, I'm gonna tell you something. I, I, Jackie Chan had a drunken, uh, drunken something. Drunken yeah. Oh back. man, that yeah. was a hell of a movie. You Ooh. remember that? Yeah, I remember. Before he became the comedian. Before he I'm became the comedian. You. Yeah, Jackie Chan is dope though, man. I Even mean, after the comedian, cool. right? Yeah, after the comedian, he laughing whoop your butt, man. <laughs> well, I gotta ask you a question about him because yeah. he was in the news. Was he? Yeah, but but go ahead and tell me who was I still the best think first. Bruce Lee win. Yeah, I, I still have to give it to Bruce, man, mm -hmm. all, all day. Yeah, that's because he did. Y'all don't trick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go with that. I, he, he get a little leverage because yeah, he depends on Yeah. So so yeah. So uh, Jackie Chan said that. Uh, what did he say, right? He talked. He said that um, he would give away all of his money. He wouldn't give it to his son. He actually said this, mm -hmm. and he, he if he passed away because he oh, don't wow. feel like he de he he deserved it. That's cold. Wow. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and wow. he's worth 300 and something million dollars. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't feel like my son is worth it. I'm going to give it to charity. Yeah. He must not be worth it then. I mean, he I must don't be, know, man. I, I, I just feel like for me, yeah. I'd have to do a trust and I'd have to, because if he have grandkids or something, right. I got to get it to my grandbaby. Right, right. You want to stay, keep it generational. If, if I have to skip him, I figure out a way to give right. him his portion while he's here. Right. But to get it to his children. Right. Absolutely. So I don't know. I don't know about that. That's something, that's the thing to say. <laughs> man. That's Because you know. hey, well, I got grandkids now, man. Y'all, wow. y'all didn't know. I know I look good, but <laughs> the man got kids. My, they young, but they still mine. And, uh. Yeah, I would want to. Yeah, if I want to skip a generation, I can do that. Yeah, I think it might make what his son get right though. I don't know. You figure the money ain't coming to you, you might want to fix some things. You think he was playing reverse psychology and he was just saying it just to get him to do some stuff? Hey, get his son better hope so. Because <laughs> you know I act right. If you had three hundred million, boy, I'd be a saint. Three hundred million. Be like, bro, I don't know why would you, you. I don't know what I was thinking. You know what I'm saying? Out of body experience, probably wasn't even me. I don't, yeah, I don't know, Dad. I'm sorry. And every year he'd be. 
wishing like, okay, when are you going to go? Right. I can't keep up the charade for the long time. Well, <laughs> no, the first thing I do is I'd have to, uh, you know, I do like Gundy. I'd, I'd practice not speaking. <laughs> you, this is gonna stop everything. Yeah. You know what I'm mean? right? Because yeah. I'm always messing up. Because my daddy evidently don't like what I'm doing, so right. I wouldn't say nothing. I'd be quiet. He'd be like, "What's wrong with my son? He changed." <laughs> it ain't that I'm changed. I'm just trying. Just trying. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just not saying that. It's gonna work. Cause Cause like, but man, but facial expressions can tell oh, without no. even saying a word. No, not after I go quiet because it's gonna change you if you don't say nothing. If you really think about it, yeah, you ain't lying either. Now you gonna go crazy. <laughs> Maybe feel sorry for him. Man, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to get this three hundred meal. I do whatever I gotta Ooh, do. Three hundred. Ooh, yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. That's a, it's a lot. So, of rich. so man, do you? Um, okay, do you listen? You listen to music? I'm gonna get that top three artists of all times out of. Cause he was a him. Tony ought to be on the top of the list, but he ain't gonna do that. Top three yeah. artists of all time, dead or alive, any, any genre. genre. Prince. Prince number one. How many in instruments did he play? I don't know. Twenty-seven. Let's mm. go. Mm. Number man. two. Oh man. See, I had to say Michael Jackson. I knew you were gonna say that, but they yeah. say Chris Brown better than Michael Jackson. No. Come on, please. Bro, Come I'm just now. telling you. Really. And I always say this, Al. Al D three hundred. I'm giving. I always give him a shout out on that for saying that. Ooh, I always say, "Which Michael? You right? which Michael? Which <laughs> <phase?"> <laughs> Cause you're the little boy. Which Michael? Yeah, yeah, you you got you got to go through them phases, yeah, man. The dark skin uh, Michael, the light skin Michael, yeah. All the phases. kid Michael. Oh no, you can't mess with that. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, the, my favorite phase of Michael Jackson would have to be the the Billy Jean album. Wasn't it bad, man? Motown twenty five, man. <laughs> <laughs> when he slid across the floor, we didn't man, know what that was. The first time, that was crazy. Hey boy, that was yeah. That's another. That's a whole nother that's level. That's a whole man. nother level of. So who did, yeah. who number three? You got Prince Michael and. Oh man, number three, man. I ooh, man. Ooh. And whoever your number three is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a contested with somebody I think better than her. Yeah, watch this. My, Let's go. Who you got? Three, you really better. Know. I mean, you better bring it. I mean, if I if I said my top three, I, Prince, Michael Jackson, I had to go straight to Jay Z. Jay Z. Now we got to yeah. go to rap. I can't do that, which I'm a PMC yeah. fan. So yeah, yeah, I ain't rocking with that at all. You yeah, I'd have to say. go just like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You heard that story Bun B told the other day on Beehive. He told about how uh, that that big pimping song uh -huh. when they all was on the boat and they was doing the video uh -huh. and uh, they, he said, and I'm a dope man. PMC is something else, but anyway. He said that uh, what happened was, he said, Pimp wouldn't go with him. But the girl that put in the video ended up being at somewhere in my in uh, uh, Atlanta uh -huh. with Pimp. Oh, wow. So they end up driving down to Miami to do the video shoot just on the beach. Because wow. he didn't, didn't want to be around Jay-Z Neil. He wasn't with that, all that. Okay. So basically, uh, he comes out. And I'm telling the story. I'm paraphrasing. But anyway, he says uh, that... <laughs> He had on a meat coat. Remember that? Uh huh. I do. And Jay Z and him asked that boy, say, uh, "Man, he had a meat, it's, it's hot out there. He got on a meat coat." <laughs> <laughs> say that boy told him, "Man, temperature ain't got. It's the TV ain't got no temperature. TV ain't hey, no." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he said, I'm a pimp regardless. Hey, so Jay Z say, man, that dude a star, man. Yeah. So, you know, certain people have that it factor. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely. So Jay Z was one, man. I seen some dope paintings today mm -hmm. of Jay Z and uh, his uh, wife. his wife and oh, wow. just uh, what was that? What was that artist name? Basquiat. Jean Michel Basquiat. Hey, you can mm. say, ooh, that's a, right. that, uh, that's a dope artist. You go look that up because nah, we absolutely. learning. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we've seen some, uh, uh, so just some things that alluded to Basquiat paintings. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, uh, Jay-Z, um, he is one that changed the dynamic for us for entrepreneurship. You know how much influence hip-hop has had on our culture for entrepreneurship. A lot of people talk down on hip-hop, but right. hip-hop has changed the narrative for a lot of black families, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it changed, the, and all over the world, people have gravitated to it. All over the world, man, and they're inspired by it. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you're inspired by the story. I mean, we're inspired by the story. I mean, you know, you, you see them. You don't see how many lawyers you see coming out, you know, yeah. inspiring people and, like, you can do this and do that. I mean, you're inspired by the story. It definitely has. What do you think about uh, when you hear stories about uh, Young Dolph and just getting gunned down like that, going to get some cookies? I think it's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, I think it's incredibly unfortunate because the man had a family, you know, he had a wife and kids, and... uh 
and it's it's that part of it that that gives the the whole story of a black eye, if you will. You know, it's it's that you know the brothers are getting gunned down, whereas you know we need brothers like that to continue to be alive, to continue to have a positive influence on the youth, to continue to you know do positive things. I think it's real unfortunate. Wow, man. Yeah, it's real. Unfortunate. Just a big big loss, man. When it comes down to the hip hop culture and yeah. and you you know like I say you see the Nipsey's and you see you see all this cloud of darkness over that whole regime when it come down to I think it boils down to you speak things into existence. Sure, absolutely. I, I think mean, what you say becomes you. Right. What you say becomes the you. The Bible would say so is a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. Man. Yeah. And I mean and that's another part of it. I mean when especially when we're talking about youth, uh it's getting them to speak positive words and say positive things. You know, no. if you're saying you know, you they never played Luther Vandross going to a drive by. No, nah, nah. <laughs> you know it wasn't no do 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 do. You know, <laughs> as they put the clips in. <laughs> nah, it wasn't music is something else, man. Music is something else, absolutely. You had a book. Uh, you you had some things you was about to share with me. Yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. Uh, well, I got a, a few. Um, but the first, we're talking about the power of words. Uh, these are called the success stacks. These are okay. Team Hot Sauce success stacks. Okay. And these are words and phrases that improve a child's self-efficacy. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And how did you come up with these? Uh, came up with them is really something I was meditating on, man. Wow. Like, okay, what, what's next? What's needed? You can open them up. You can check them out. Uh, but it's about 65 words and phrases. Uh, and it has the characters on there, Team Hot Sauce. And it's wow. just different words because the whole thing is, is that what you have, what you say. So if a child learns a word like perseverance, what it means, yeah. right? What that word means and start using it in their everyday vernacular, then you're going to see that child change. They're going to start saying, oh man, I, I, you know, I, I could persevere through that challenge as opposed to I think I'll make it. That makes your child more marketable. It's going to make them more confident. It's going to give them a, a greater sense of self and it's going to make them a more uplifting person around other people. So, you know, it's I something. I love this, bro. Yeah. So, and you came up with this. Yes, sir. Yeah. And 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 um, can you buy these or how? Yeah, is it? yeah, you can buy them right online. Really? Just, yeah, you you got to. Yeah. How, how's that? You you are you marketing them? Yeah, you know, yeah. marketing is important, right? That's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's the most important thing. You marketing thing. these things? Yes, sir. Yeah, called Team Hot Sauce Success Stacks. Wow, yeah. man, this is dope, bro. I like it, man. Yes, sir. One, the first card I pulled out. Yeah. The zeal. Man. Zeal. <laughs> the, the, the Bible says zeal. It says uh uh uh. That uh, the people had a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. In right. chapter 10 of Romans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They had a zeal for God. There's so many people today have yeah. a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. they say we love God. You can ask everybody. They love Jesus. Yeah. They love, but when it come down to it, they say it, but their actions kind of mm -hmm. don't look the same as what they say. Right. Because they love God the way they seen God love. Yeah. Did you hear yeah. what I just said? Where they seen God love. That's the only way they could. Yeah. Because if you don't read, yeah. you got to read it. You got to read it. In order to understand it and even get a, you know, get, get to, to get revelation. Absolutely. And so a lot of times people, they love God because of what they seen, a perspective of how God should be loved. So they don't read, but they say we did this or we did that. And they don't have no knowledge. Right. But they say, I love God. Man, we've been going over here and doing this forever. Right. But they have no knowledge. No knowledge. So Paul thought it upon himself to say the people that was of what? Israel. They had a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. Mm. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Which means that they're not getting the results they want. That's right. And it was still going by the old covenant way. So it gets deeper, bro. Yeah. I just love the word, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when, it, when, absolutely. When, when, you, when you really get a revelation on what, what's being said yeah. and really do your research, oh, man, it's something else, bro. Most people won't do it because it takes time. You know what yeah. it is. Yeah. People don't have time to do nothing no more. You yeah. know what I mean? People, you, you go sit down and say, hey, man, let's go read together. And they're like, what? Right. <laughs> Read, man. What's wrong with you, man? Well, you know, bro, it's a, it's, a, it's a microwave society where we don't want, you know, we want it fast. We want it now. We want it yesterday. Why is it taking so long? And, uh, you know, the reality is, you know, you have seed time and harvest. Yeah. Seed time and harvest. Yeah. And so things take time. And a lot of times people think that things aren't happening in their life because it's taking too long. Uh, but the reality is, is that, you know, the roots got to grow underground first. Wow. And, uh, and then it starts to take root. That is. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's something that's really impacting the youth, uh, impacting a lot of adults, is that they don't want to take the time. They don't want to give it time. 
you know, you gotta give success time to mature and to and to you know come out the ground. Some things YouTube ain't gonna be able to teach them. Ain't gonna be able to teach them now. <laughs> they teach him everything. Find this book, man. You got a book over there. I seen it. Yeah. So the book is the book is called "Raising Extraordinary Kids." All right. All right. And uh, it's five wow. habits. Wow. I love yeah. it. This mine? Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Copy. I'm gonna start taking some stuff. Yeah. Now. yeah. You, you bring all this stuff. I like to take some stuff from. Yeah. I'm yeah I ain't gonna try you. to take it from yeah. you physically. No. <laughs> no I, I got you, nah, I didn't interview just too late. Right. Right. You good. <laughs> But this but, book here, I'm, I'm definitely gonna take it and put it in my my books. You know, we keep them, man. Bro. Absolutely, all our guests, man. But so, man, raising extraordinary kids, five habits. You just got to autograph it. Yeah, yeah you got autograph to. it for sure. Yeah, the edge sure. in life, man. Absolutely. Wow. So, how did you end up? Uh, did you self publish this? Absolutely. Wow. So, so it, yeah. is it on Amazon? It is. So, yeah. so, so, just give us a rundown. What what made you what made you uh, do this book? Uh, uh, yeah, kind of what, what pushed and prompted you to get it done? Well, it's, again, it's about the need and about, you know, what need is there that's out there. And a lot of times it's, um, you know, parents trying to figure out, okay, how do I give my child the edge in life? I really don't believe in, in teaching people about how to parent their kids. I believe that because as a parent, you know more about your child than mm -hmm. anybody else does. But, you know, we're in a competitive world, right? How do you give your child the edge? How do you get them above the competition to get them to the level of success that you want them to have? What things do they need? To, to be competitive and to get to another level. So that's what the five habits are about. Wow. It's getting them to, you know, if you want them to get to college, how do you get them to college as opposed to being lost in the shuffle, right? How should they think? How should they talk? How should you be as a parent, right? To be able to get that child to be, you know, their best version of themselves. Wow, man. That's what you, it's about. Say, man, you something else, man. God sure. is blessing you, bro. Why you sure. bless others, bro. Sir. Sure. It's very evident. Yes, sir. That's the dope part about it, man. Like, and, and this is something that you do. This is your gift. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Now, you pull out another book, I'm taking it. No, I'm not <laughs> taking it physically. <laughs> so, so, I just want to say, man, thank you so much. Is this, you got more? I got more. If you Look, man, dude, got, got time more. For man, yeah, I got time. Well, this is, um, so, this is a youth magazine. Wow. And I'll get you a copy of that. I have some. Okay. But that's called You Can Have It All. And You Can Have It All is a youth motivation magazine. Wow. It's one of the only motivational development magazines of its kind in the world. Uh, we're getting it printed in multiple languages. It's digital, so people can get it anywhere. And it's all about kids seeing other kids and being inspired by that. Mm -hmm. Being wow, inspired by man, the growth. You, you something yeah. else, bro. Yes, sir. You something else, man. Uh -huh. I ain't playing no games with you, bro. This is, man, you know, OG, OG man, OG Big Red, man. This man, he yeah, done blessed us, man. Man, man, yeah. man, I sent you down here like this. I don't know if he thought he was going to get me whooped, though. He might have been trying to see if I was going to try to I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but this book, man, this yeah. this is dope, bro. Look at the and and and, it, and you can tell, you know, it, it, it's some work put in here. Absolutely. You know, I'm a picture guy. You yeah. know, okay. don't get it wrong. I read, but I'm a picture guy. Really. <laughs> Back yeah. in the days, that's what they knew me. Yeah, right? a picture guy. Yeah, I seen every picture in there. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. And I gave you a pen right there for you to autograph. Okay. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I, I, mean, I love it, man. Because like I said, once again, like when we first started, man, I love the fact that I know the work is happening. There's proof in the pudding. Yeah. You know, you got a lot of people doing the talk, but they're not willing to walk the walk. Right. Um, right. It's, it takes a conditioning. Yeah. It takes a deep embedding of, of, of this is my gift. Yeah. And if I, I got to do this else I die. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? And, and 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 at the end of the day, once you're in your gift, boy, you bad then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't get, I'm, I, this is what I like doing, talking, you as you already know. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why when I get behind here, Oh man, it's hard on you, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the best. They come out from wherever, whatever. So I've been talking for years. I said, man, I'm a challenge. This fact, this one here been talking. Yeah. It's like when you get somebody that knows what you know. Yeah, it's, it, it iron sharpens iron, right? It does, man. So it it's does. just it's dope, man. I like it. I like it, man. I love the fact, <laughs> man. Hey, yeah, man. Everything. So, um, oh well, everything that we do goes towards you know percentage of it all goes towards uh, the orphanage. Dope. Yeah. And that's something yeah. that's real important. So the kids, been, been, you've been seeing some changes in the kids' life because mm -hmm. of what you do? Absolutely. Uh, we've seen the big changes. The biggest is, uh, uh, you know, just getting the infrastructure situated where, I mean, because you're talking about kids that no shoes, sleeping on, like, rock floors. Wow. You know, no toilets, no, Man. you know, no stove, no, you know, none of that. So, you know, to be able, the big, to, be able to see the growth there, we're starting to be able to, you know, get doors and windows put on the orphanage, you know, starting to get, you know, things painted and getting the floors fixed and all that so that the kids are comfortable mm -hmm. um, because those kids have dreams too. A lot of them want to be, you know, doctors, nurses, engineers, they want to be pastors, they want to be teachers. They all have goals. And, you know, it could be one of those children that come up with the cure for cancer 
or come up with the cure for, you know, oh, stupidity. <laughs> hey, man, what, what, what's up with the water boys, man? I've been hearing about them water boys down here. What's the yeah. deal with those guys? And uh, is that a real thing to where they need help? Or is it something where, where you see people run into the cars with water and uh, they're, they're team and they asking for money or whatever? What's up with that? Uh, I think the biggest thing with it, man, is it would be great if they got uh, what they needed is coaching on on running a business right i mean it's okay these are boys that you don't want out selling drugs yeah you don't want them out shooting they want to make money for themselves mm-hmm. they came up with a positive way to do it now it's how do we get them to do it so that there's not creating a, a issue and not creating trouble is the biggest thing wow. um you know so however they were doing it i'm not exactly sure you know we heard some things on the news that they were you know running up to cars and doing all that but you but if you don't know you don't know if you don't know how to approach i mean first of all you want to a car right but they know, okay, if I can sell this water, then I can, that's better than selling drugs, right? So how do we uh, empower them to be able to do something like that without getting in trouble, without being, you know, a headache to the people driving up so that it could be a win-win for them? I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah. man. Man, shout out to that boy, man. Look, Sean Banks in the building, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How can people get, to, get a hold of you? Man, follow me on IG, SF Dreams Big. Wow, that's easy. You see that? Uh, SF Dreams B. Yeah, yeah, SF Dreams B. I hope you're following me, yeah. SF Dream B. We and you got to lock and tap in right yes, now. Yes, sir. Let's do you it. Know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming on the show. We love you, man. Man, love you. Thank and, you for hey, having man, me. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. We did it, man. ATL, stand up, man. Stand up, ATL. I'll let your boy. It's a unique hustle. Oh, yeah. Oh, I turned that.